You use Google every day. But what if I told you there's a secret internet the FBI is completely obsessed with? An entire hidden world with its own search engines that show you things Google will never see. Today, I'm showing you seven of these dark web search engines, and you will not believe why the FBI is watching every single one. This secret internet is called the dark web. It runs on a network called Tor, which stands for the onion router. Picture this. Tor wraps your internet connection after layer of armor like an onion, making you almost totally anonymous. These websites don't end in .com, they end in .onion. And you can't use Google Chrome to get there. You need the special Tor browser, and more importantly, you need one of these insane search engines. Okay, stop. We need to have a serious talk. This video is for educational purposes only. The dark web is the Wild West. It is not safe. Using the Tor browser is legal in most places, but accessing or downloading illegal material is a serious crime. The dark web's anonymity attracts everyone from journalists to cyber criminals. If you ever decide to explore, you do it entirely at your own risk. Always use the Tor browser and a good VPN for another layer of security. Never download files from untrusted sources and be extremely careful what you click. All right, warning over. Let's do this. First up is a search engine you've actually heard of, DuckDuckGo. On the normal internet, the surface web, DuckDuckGo is famous for being a privacy-focused alternative to Google that doesn't track you. And that's exactly why it's the default search engine that comes with the Tor browser. So you're probably thinking, bro, that's just a normal search engine. But DuckDuckGo has a secret .onion version that operates completely inside the Tor network. Think of it as the main entrance to this hidden world. It's familiar, it's private, and it's designed to protect you from the second you start. But if it mostly searches the normal web, why would the FBI care? because it's the last safe place millions of Tor users see before they dive deeper to find things that can't be found anywhere on Google. Its presence on Tor proves the massive demand for anonymity, the one thing the entire dark web is built on. It's the clean, well-lit lobby before you open the door to the truly wild stuff. If DuckDuckGo was the lobby, Amia is the first secret hallway. Amia calls itself a hidden service search engine, and it actually has a conscience. It even receives support from the Tor project. Its entire mission is to prove the dark web isn't just for criminals by actively filtering its search results to remove illegal and abusive content. It's like a white hat search engine trying to guide you to the good side of the dark web. Amia's strict policy against indexing abuse material makes it one of the safest ways to navigate this space. This makes it an amazing tool for researchers and anyone curious who wants to understand the tech without falling into a digital minefield. You can even access Amia on the regular internet, but its real power is inside Tor. So why would the FBI be interested in an engine that tries to stay clean? Think about it. By trying to make a clean list of sites, Amia literally creates a map of the dark web for them. It shows them what normal looks like, which helps them spot criminal operations even faster. In its mission to create order, Amia gives intelligence agencies a perfect, structured list of everything happening in a chaotic network. Okay, things are getting way more serious. We're leaving the safe zones and entering a gigantic, unfiltered library. Haystack is an absolute monster. It claims to have indexed over 1.5 billion pages. It gives you a much deeper look into the dark web and even has safety flags to warn you before you make a bad click. And get this, Haystack has a premium version you have to pay for. Who pays for a dark web search engine? Cybersecurity professionals, threat analysts, and, you guessed it, the FBI. They need the best tools in the world to conduct deep investigations and monitor global threats. The FBI's interest here is so obvious. First, the insane amount of data Haystack has is a potential intelligence goldmine. Second, 
The fact that a premium service even exists means government agencies are literally customers, paying money to use these powerful tools to turn the dark web's total chaos into searchable, actionable intelligence. Okay, the next search engines are even more unfiltered and have some absolutely insane reputations. This is where it gets crazy. If you want me to keep exploring insane internet mysteries just like this, destroy that subscribe button right now. It literally takes one second. Okay, let's go deeper. As older search engines disappear, new ones like Dark Search rise up to take their place. Dark Search is a newer engine with a super simple interface that offers free access to all the dot onion links you could want. Its goal is to make exploring the dark web a little less scary. Unlike the old clunky tools, Dark Search has a clean design and is focused on being easy to use. For law enforcement, a tool like this is a blessing and a curse. On one hand, it makes the dark web easier to access for everyone, including people with bad intentions. But on the other hand, it also makes it easier for investigators to monitor new sites and track criminal trends. Any tool that makes the hidden internet easier to search also makes it easier to police. Number five is Onion Land Search, and this thing is a beast. It's known for having a smooth user experience and can search across both the dark web and the regular internet at the same time. It also indexes a massive number of hidden services. The key feature here is aggregation. Onion Land pulls together a huge amount of content, but it's also known for mixing advertisements in with its search results, so you have to be so careful. From an investigator's standpoint, Onion Land is a treasure trove. Its huge index is perfect for hunting down specific data leaks or monitoring secret discussions. Plus, its ad system shows them exactly what kind of sites and illegal services are being actively promoted, giving them a real-time view of the dark web's economy. All right, it's time for the final boss. Torch is a legend. It's one of the oldest and largest search engines on the dark web, and it's famous for its massive size and complete lack of censorship. The idea here is that censoring the dark web is impossible, so they don't even try. This means when you search on Torch, you get everything. The good, the bad, and the profoundly illegal. Using Torch is like drinking from a fire hose of pure chaos. You are exposed to a flood of raw, unfiltered information, including direct links to active criminal marketplaces and hacking forums. There are no safety nets. For anyone unprepared, one wrong click can lead to malware or seeing something you can never unsee. For the FBI, Torch is both a primary target and an essential tool. It's a target because it's a direct gateway to the entire criminal economy. But it's a tool for the exact same reason. It gives agents a real-time, uncensored view of active threats. They can search for mentions of companies to find data breaches or watch the sale of new hacking tools. Torch's refusal to filter makes it a perfect mirror of the dark web's darkest side. Incredibly dangerous, but for intelligence agencies, one of the most powerful tools they have. The last one on our list is a ghost. Grams doesn't exist anymore, but its story is the craziest of all and explains exactly why federal agencies are so obsessed with this space. Launched in 2014, Grams was a game changer. It had an interface that looked just like Google, but it was designed for one thing, to exclusively index darknet markets. Before Grams, finding a specific illegal product meant visiting dozens of different secret websites. Grams brought all of those listings together, letting users search for anything across the entire darknet economy from one single page. It even had a service called Gram Words, just like Google AdWords, so criminals could pay to get their listings to the top. It was literally the Google of illegal online shopping. It also offered a Bitcoin tumbling service called Helix to help criminals anonymize their money. Grams shut down in 2017, but then, plot twist, a man named Larry Dean Harmon pleaded guilty to operating both Grams and the Helix money laundering service. He was accused of laundering hundreds of millions of dollars by partnering with the biggest darknet markets in the world. 
The story of Graham's is the ultimate lesson. The FBI's interest isn't just in search technology, it's in the real-world crime that tech enables. Graham's was a critical piece of infrastructure for a global criminal enterprise, and taking down its operator proved that even behind all of Tor's layers of anonymity, you are not untouchable. The ghost of Graham's haunts the dark web today, a reminder that any tool built to organize crime will become a top-tier target for the FBI. So there you have it. From the normal front door of DuckDuckGo to the clean hallways of Amia, all the way to the unfiltered chaos of Torch and the ghost of Grams. We've seen the entire ecosystem. What we learned today is that the dark web isn't just one thing. It's an insanely complex world. Some tools are built for privacy and freedom. Others are built for crime and profit. Law enforcement isn't trying to shut down the idea of an anonymous internet. They are focused on the tangible harm that is planned and carried out in its shadows. These search engines can be gateways to extremely dangerous places, but for the agencies hunting criminals, these exact same gateways are the most essential tools they have. The internet you use every day is just the surface. Underneath lies a hidden world, and these search engines are the keys. Just remember, for every door you open, you can never be sure what or who is waiting on the other side. Stay safe and stay curious. Thanks for watching. If you want to continue exploring cybersecurity and the digital underground, check out the other videos on this channel. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss what's next. See you in the next one.